Welcome to this step-by-step -step guide where we'll set up WSL, install Ubuntu 24.04, and configure Miniconda, TensorFlow, and PyTorch. We'll also check GPU availability and install Visual Studio Code with all the essential extensions. Whether you're diving into AI, machine learning, or development workflows, this video has everything you need to get started. So, sit back, follow along, and let's build your ultimate development environment together. Let's start with step one. By default, WSL is not installed on Windows. So first we need to install it. Let's start the terminal first. I am using PowerShell 7. You can install it from the Microsoft Store. Now, let's start the terminal as administrator. This is very important to remember. When you need to install WSL, you need to open the terminal as administrator. By default, the terminal opens with Windows PowerShell. Click the down arrow button at the top to switch to PowerShell or another shell if preferred. The easiest way to install WSL is by running the command WSL-install. This command will install all the necessary components, including the default Linux distribution. As of now, the default Linux distribution is Ubuntu 24.04. However, I don't want to install the Linux distribution immediately. Instead, I'd like to check the available distributions first, and then decide which one to install. To do this, we can install WSL without a default distribution. To achieve this, use the command wsl-install-no-distribution. Now, let's execute this command. You will see. The operation completed successfully. The requested operation is successful. Changes will not be effective until the system is rebooted. It means the installation was successful, but the changes won't take effect until after you. Restart your computer. Go ahead and reboot your PC to finalize the setup and start using WSL. I've just rebooted my PC and reopened the terminal. Let's continue from where we left off. Let's start with the command WSL. WSL is installed correctly. Now, we can check the available Linux distributions in the online store using the command wsl-list-online. Let's run the command and see the list of distributions available for installation. Here we get a list of available Linux distributions. You can see options like Ubuntu, Oracle Linux, OpenSUSE, Debian, and Kali Linux. For this setup, I want to install Ubuntu 24.04. Let's proceed with that installation. To install Ubuntu 24.04, we use the command wsl-install-d ubuntu-24.04. Let's run it. This will take a little bit of time as it downloads and installs the distribution for us. Now we need to set our username and password. For this project, I use tech jotters for my username. I am giving a super complex password. I need to enter my password twice. Now you can see I already logged into Ubuntu. Let's exit from Ubuntu. Now we need to restart the terminal. Let's close it and again start the terminal. Click the down arrow and select Ubuntu from the list. Now let's update Ubuntu. The command to update Ubuntu is sudo apt update and it'll ask the password for the sudo users. Now let's put the password and it'll start updating the repository. It'll also show the number of packages can be upgraded. Here we can see 20 packages can be upgraded. So let's upgrade it all the packages. The command is sudo apt upgrade dash y. Here I put the y to confirm the action. If you don't put the y at the end, it'll later ask you to confirm the action. Type y and it'll continue. So let's run the command and upgrade our system. Our Ubuntu 24.04 is upgraded. Now let's check the GPU. Command to check NVIDIA GPU is NVIDIA-SMI. This screen indicates that NVIDIA GPU driver version is 566.36, and our GPU is working perfectly on WSL Ubuntu. Now we are ready to install CUDA Toolkit 12.6 in our system. We are now going to install CUDA Toolkit 12.6. Open the browser and search for CUDA Toolkit. Click on the link CUDA Toolkit 12.6 Update 3 Downloads. It'll take you to the CUDA Toolkit download page. 
Linux x86-64. That was Eldash Ubuntu 2.0. And finally, run file local. Now let's copy the first command and paste it to the terminal. This command will download the CUDA toolkit 12.6 in our machine. Our download is completed. It's a big download, and the file size is around 4 gigabyte. We need to install some packages before installing CUDA toolkit. Run the command. sudo apt install y build essential. This command will install all the necessary packages needed by CUDA toolkit. We need to configure bash rc now. To open bash rc, put the command nano tilde slash dot bash rc. Here at the bottom, we need to add two lines. Export path equals slash usr slash local slash cuda dash 12.6 slash bin colon dollar sign path and export ld underscore library underscore path equals slash usr slash local slash cuda dash 12.6 slash lib 64 colon dollar sign ld underscore library underscore path. Now save the file by pressing control plus O and exit by pressing control plus X. Source the bash rc file to get the immediate effect on the shell. Source tilde slash dot bash rc. Believe it or not, our CUDA toolkit is installed and configured. Let's check it with the command nvcc dash dash version. At the bottom, it is showing the CUDA version. Now, in this part, we'll download and configure cudnn. Let's go to the browser and search for cudnn. Select the link for NVIDIA CUDNN CUDA Deep Neural Network and click on the link. Click on Download CUDNN Library. Click on Linux. Click on 86 underscore x64. Select Tarball. And select 12. Copy the link. Now go to the terminal and paste the link. Press Enter. It'll start downloading CUDNN Tarball file. Now extract the file with command tar-xvf and the name of the file. Don't worry about the commands. I'll provide the GitHub link where you'll find all the commands step by step. We need to copy all the files starting with cudnn and ending with .h. We'll paste them into the include directory of the CUDA 12.6. Now we'll copy all the files starting with libcudnn and paste them to the CUDA 12.6 lib64 directory. The final step for cudnn is to check the installation. Let's run the command. It is showing the cudnn major version 9 and minor version 6. So, our cudnn is working perfectly now. Now we'll install and configure TensorRT. Let's go to the browser and search for TensorRT. Click on the TensorRT SDK NVIDIA Developer. Now click Download. In this point, you need a NVIDIA Developer account to log in. If you don't have one, just create one. You can use your Gmail to create a new one. It is completely free. Now that I am logged in, it is showing me the versions of TensorRTT to download. I'll download the latest one, Tensor RT10. Click on Tensor RT10. Select Tensor RT 10.6 G A. Right click on the TAR version for CUDA 12 and copy the link. Now let's go to the terminal and download the link with wget. Press Enter and it'll start downloading the TAR file. We need to extract the TAR file. The command is .tar xvf tensor rt 10.7.23.linux.x86 underscore 64 gnu.cuda 12.6.tar.gz. Now we need to copy the files from tensor rt, include directory to our installed CUDA directory. Also, we need to copy the files from tensor rt lib directory to CUDA directory. Basically, our Tensor RT installation is completed. Let's check the installation. It returns us the NV Infra files. That shows that our Tensor RT is installed and working perfectly. Let's install Miniconda for Python. Search Miniconda into the browser. 
Select Installing Mini Conda. Now select Mac OS slash Linux installation. Select the option to download an older version. Now click on the HTTPS link. It'll take you to the Mini Conda repository. Click on the Linux 86 underscore 64 version. Copy the link and open terminal. Type wget and paste the copied link to the terminal. It'll download the miniconda sh file. Now type the command bash dot slash and miniconda file name. Press enter and the installation will start. Type yes to accept the license. Now press enter to install it in the default location. Type yes to update shell profile to automatically initialize conda. Close the WSL terminal. Start it again to get the shell change effect immediately. You'll see base at the beginning of the terminal. This is the sign that makes sure your conda is configured perfectly. Now let's create a directory named projects. Inside this directory, I'll create another directory called tensor. Inside this directory, I'll save all the files for this project. Now I'll create a conda environment named tensor. The command is conda create dash n tensor python equal 3.11 press enter and it'll create an python environment for us. Activate the tensor conda environment. Let's test the version of python. It is showing our python version 3.11. Next we'll install both tensorflow gpu and pytorch. After that, we'll verify if they are utilizing the GPU properly. Now let's open the browser and search for TensorFlow. Click on Install and then click PIP from the sidebar. You can find the installation commands here. Copy the first command. Go to the terminal and paste it. Press Enter and it'll start installing TensorFlow GPU. Go to the browser again and copy the second command. Go back to the terminal and paste the command. Press Enter. This will check the GPU. Ignore the warnings. Check the last line. It is showing the name of the device is GPU0, and the device type is GPU. Our latest TensorFlow is working perfectly with GPU. Now we are going to install PyTorch. Search PyTorch into the browser search bar. Select Get Started. Now, select Preview Nightly for the PyTorch build because we are using CUDA Toolkit 12.6, which is not available for the stable version. Copy the command and paste it to the terminal. Press Enter and it'll start PyTorch installation. Go to the browser again, scroll it down. You'll find the code to test. Copy the first line, Import Torch. Go to the terminal, start Python. Paste the first code which will import Torch. Go back to the browser and copy the second line. Again, go to terminal and paste the second line. It'll check the GPU availability. In our case, GPU availability is true. So our PyTorch is also working with GPU. Let's close Python. We need to install ipykernel in our environment to use this kernel. So the command is p ip install ipykernel. Let's register our kernel for tensor environment. Python dash m pi kernel install dash dash user dash dash name equal tensor dash dash display dash name tensor. Our kernel tensor is registered. Let's install VS Code for our Python development environment. VS Code installation is straightforward. Accept the license and I am going to use all the default settings. Let's start the terminal again. Now navigate to the tensor directory cd project slash tensor and activate the conda environment. Conda activate tensor. Now I am going to open VS Code in this directory. I like light theme. So, I am selecting the light modern theme. Next, I'll install three extensions. Number one, Python. Number two, Jupyter Bundle. And finally, WSL extension. Let's create a Jupyter notebook file. 
That is test.ipymb. It's time to run some test code. I've copied the code from TensorFlow and PyTorch installation page. Close the VS code and run it again from Ubuntu Terminal. It'll install some dependencies automatically. Open test.ipynb file on the VS code and select kernel from the top right. If you don't see you kernel that was named Tensor, please install another extension on VS code. It is Jupyter Hub. Now let's go to the file browser and open test.ipynb file. Make sure your kernel is WSL Tensor, run the code block, and you'll see your desired output. If you see the warnings, please run the code block again and the warning will be gone. Wow, we've covered a lot in this video, haven't we? From installing WSL, setting up Ubuntu 24.04, installing Miniconda, configuring the latest TensorFlow and PyTorch, to checking GPU availability, and finally getting Visual Studio Code up and running with all the essential extensions. That's a full-stack development environment ready to tackle AI, machine learning, or any project you're dreaming of. Creating a detailed step-by-step -step guide like this takes a lot of time and effort to ensure it's easy to follow and works perfectly for you. If you found this video helpful, your appreciation means the world to me. Please hit the like button if you enjoyed the video or learned something new. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification bell so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. Your support helps me grow this channel and motivates me to create more content like this. If you want to see more videos about tools, tech setups, and in-depth guides like this one, let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear your thoughts and suggestions. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Until then, Happy coding and take care.